Hello there. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of elliptic integrals. So in the last video, uh, in case you didn't watch that, I definitely recommend doing so. Uh, the elliptic integral E was defined with parameter k of some variable x to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of the square root of 1 minus k squared t squared all over the square root of 1 minus t squared dt. And using the properties of geometry, we verified one of the results namely e0 of 1 was equal to pi over 2. In this video we're going to look at two representations of this particular elliptic integral and also go through an extensive example of how to evaluate some definite integrals in terms of elliptic integrals. Alright, so as mentioned before, for the majority of the values of k um, this function is non-elementary, but for some particular values of k, this function e of x actually is an elementary function. Uh, so for example, consider e1 of x, right? So that's by definition going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x, and now we're going to be letting k to be equal to 1. So that means uh, the numerator and the denominator are the same function, so we just have the integral uh, from 0 to x of 1 dt, which we know just to be equal to x, right? So that's the most simplest uh, representation of our elliptic integrals, uh, but do keep in mind that this is not the whole line y is equal to x. Uh, this is only defined on the interval of negative 1 to 1, and if you go back to where we sort of derive this property of elliptic integrals, um, then that should be obvious. Now let's actually look at another representation of this elliptic integral, because not all elliptic integrals will look um, like the quotient of 2 radicals. So what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, defining uh, t to be equal to sine of theta and we're going to be letting x to be equal to sine of alpha um, in this particular uh, expression or in the original expression. So that means e sub k of sine of alpha is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to sine of alpha times the square root of 1 minus k squared sine squared theta over 1 minus sine squared theta times the cosine of theta d theta, right? Because that's the uh, derivative of dt. So dt is equal to the cosine theta d theta. So remember that 1 minus, cos uh, 1 minus sine squared is precisely equal to uh, cosine squared of theta, and we have the square root that's going to be applied to this. So the square root of cosine squared theta is going to be cosine theta, therefore the bottom will cancel out with this cosine theta there, right? So remember, we can just define sine of alpha to be equal to something if we want, um, because nothing else is going to be present here. In general, we could have probably just defined this to be equal to something anyway, because we're not really using that in terms of this integrand anyway. Uh, so we can rewrite this integral as ek uh, so of some variable phi uh, as the integral from 0 to phi of the square root of 1 minus k squared times sine squared theta d theta. So this is an equivalent representation for the same exact uh, elliptic integral of before. So let's introduce uh, some terminology here. Uh, so we have ekx which was equal to 0 to x times the square root of 1 minus k squared t squared square root of 1 minus t squared dt and we also have ek phi which is equal to the integral from 0 to phi of the square root of 1 minus k squared sine squared phi uh, I mean theta, sorry I get carried away with my phi's so this last representation is what we call the trigonometric, so trigonometric form of the elliptic integral E, and the first form is what we will refer to as the Legendre normal form uh, of the elliptic integral. So we have the Legendre normal form and we have the trigonometric form of EKX, right? Now, here's a subtle question. Uh, 
Notice we're using the same exact function name. So here's a question for you. Uh, do we need different notation for different forms? So take a moment and think about that. So we can look at an example to start to jog our mind. So we can rewrite e3x uh, via the Legendre form uh, to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of um, uh, 1 minus 9 t squared all over 1 minus t squared uh, dt. And you can actually show that this integral is actually the same as the integral from 0 to x of the square root of 1 minus sine squared of t dt. So regardless of the value of t, these two equations or integrals are always going to be equal to one another. So at least be comfortable with that notion because definitely a lot of relations in integral calculus when you start working with uh, special functions have this property. All right, so the integral that I'm going to illustrate this elliptic uh, integral notion on is the following. So we're going to be looking at the integral, which I'm going to denote as star, uh, to be the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of sine x dx. A very simple looking and appearly, appearingly harmless. So my claim is that this function is not an elementary and that it actually can be represented in terms of elliptic integrals, right? So I do have a sine x function here underneath the radical. Uh, so I'm going to be going for the trigonometric representation for this elliptic integral um, directly. So I would like this thing to be equal to something like uh, 1 minus k squared uh, sine squared theta. This is pretty much what I want. I don't have any constants in front of here or anything, so I'm just going to use a basic substitute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by letting sine x be equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So this is the substitution that I'm going to make. So let's go through some extensive algebra and see if we can sort of transform uh, this integral. So I'm going to dif uh, differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I'm going to have cosine of x dx is going to be equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. Now you may want to switch into the double angle identity for sine on the right hand side, but I want that interior of all my trigonometric functions to be just theta, so I'm not going to um, do that here because you're going to eventually have to do another u substitution to eliminate that too anyway. Um, so I'm just going to solve this equation for dx, uh, so therefore dx is going to be equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta times the differential of theta all divided by cosine of x. Alright, so the next thing I need to figure out, so we've taken care of this term uh, and we have a representation for dx, but well, we have a cosine x in terms of there, so let's see if we can uh, figure out a representation of cosine x in terms of theta. Alright, so we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Uh, that's no big deal. Uh, so that means cosine of x is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus sine x, the quantity squared. We already know a substitution for sine of x in terms of theta. Um, so that means cosine x is just going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus 1 minus sine squared theta squared. So expanding that out, we're going to have the square root of 1 minus. So 1 times 1 is going to be 1 we're going to have minus 2 sine squared theta, and then we're going to have plus sine to the power of 4 theta there. And then we're going to distribute this negative inside, so the 1 minus 1's are going to cancel. Uh, so therefore, cosine of x is going to be equal to the square root of 2 sine squared theta minus sine to the power of 4 theta. I can factor out a sine theta or sine squared theta, depending on how you look at it, out of the radical. So cosine of x is going to be equal to sine of theta multiplied by 2 minus sine squared theta. Right? Now this sort of looks like an elliptic uh, integral format in trigonometric form, so that may be useful. Right? So we have a representation for cosine x now. So going back for our differential of x representation, so we had 2 sine theta, cosine theta, 
times the differential of theta all over cosine x, but cosine x is this expression. So if sine theta times the radical of 2, 1 minus sine squared theta, I have some sine thetas to cancel out, which is one reason why you shouldn't uh, just switch into uh, uh, double angle identity. So we have dx is going to be equal to 2 cosine theta d theta all over the square root of 2 minus sine squared theta. Right. So this uh, differential form is definitely what we want. Alright, so one last thing that we need to take care of. So remember our integral was 0 to pi. So we need to transform uh, these two limits. Right. Alright, so what did we have? So we had sine of x was equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. So both of these out are x values, so we need to figure out what theta corresponds to that, right? Um, so when x is equal to pi, uh, and when x is equal to 0, we have two results. So I leave it to you to solve this trigonometric equation on the appropriate boundaries um, to show that this corresponds to theta is equal to pi over 2 and theta is equal to minus pi over 2. Alright, so now we have all of the elements of the integral that we need. So therefore our integral star is equal to the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 times the square root of sine x, which was 1 minus sine squared theta, multiplied by our dx term, which is going to be 2 cosine theta times d theta all over the square root of 2 minus sine. Alright, so I'm going to factor out this 2 and I'm going to try and pretty up this integral just a little bit. Um, so we're going to have uh, 2 times the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Uh, on the numerator, we're going to have cosine of theta multiplied by 1 minus the sine squared of theta all over the square root of 2 minus sine squared of theta uh, d theta. Um, so it should be obvious that we're going to use use substitution here. We're going to be letting u be equal to sine of theta uh, because our derivative so if u is equal to sine theta, then of course du is going to be equal to cosine of theta d theta. Um, so d theta is going to give us our differential with cosine of theta on the bottom, which is what we want. right? Uh, and it's very easy to see um, that if theta is equal to the vector um, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, uh, then this is going to map to the vector uh, u is equal to uh, Uh, so then we can go back to our... Alright, so therefore, our integral, star, is going to be equal to 2 times the integral from negative 1 to 1, uh, and then we're going to have the square root of 1 minus u squared, all over the square root of 2 minus u squared, and then d theta uh, is going to be equal to... Uh, so we already canceled that. Alright, that's... Alright, so we're almost in the representation we want. Uh, we want 1 in this term, so we're going to be factoring out a 2 there. Uh, so, in case you're not familiar with how to do that now. So we have the square root of 1 minus u squared over the square root of 2 times. So 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1, and then we're going to have u squared divided by 2, which is the same as u divided by the square root of 2, the quantity squared, uh, du. Right. Uh, so then we're going to be using a substitution, so w is going to be equal to u divided by the square root of 2. So that means um, square root of 2 w is equal to u, uh, which means that du is just going to be equal to the square root of 2 times dw. And one can show that the vector uh, minus 1 to 1 is going to be mapped to the vector w is equal to minus root 2 over 2. So our integral then becomes, this is going to be equal to 2 times the integral from minus root 2 over 2 to root 2 over 2. Uh, and then what do we have? So u is equal to that, so I'm just going to replace that here. So we're going to have 1 minus, so square root of 2 squared is going to be 2. So we have 2 times w squared all over the square root of 2 times the square root of 1 minus w squared times the square root of 2 times dw. So our square root of 2's cancel, which is nice. So our integral becomes 
2 times the integral from minus root 2 over 2 to root 2 over 2. Uh, and then we're going to have 1 minus 2 w squared all over the square root of 1 minus w squared dw. Right? So we can rewrite this in another way because notice this, this function is... So since we're on a symmetric interval, then this is just going to be equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to the square root of 2 over 2. And we can replace these variables, say, uh, 1 minus 2t squared over the square root of 1 minus t squared dt. Right? So this is going to be my x value for my particular... So let's rewrite this in a more particular way. So star is going to be equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to x of the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 squared t squared all over the square root of 1 minus t squared dt evaluated as x goes to the square root of 2 over 2, right? So this is my parameter k, right? So that means my star function is 4 times an elliptic integral with parameter square root of 2 of x evaluated as x goes to square root of 2 over 2. So that means the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of sine x dx is just equal to 4 times the elliptic, uh, the elliptic integral with parameter square root of 2 of root 2 over 2. Right? So that's the closed form representation of this non-elementary integral in terms of elliptic functions. So as we do know, uh, sine x uh, is symmetric about the line x is equal to pi over 2 on this interval 0 to pi. So you can uh, do an example that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of sine of x dx is just going to be equal to 2 times the elliptic integral with parameter square root of So this is just some applications of how to use uh, elliptic integrals to find closed form representations of some integrals that you would not have with just elementary primitives. Hope you enjoyed.